All right, so now we're going to look at some uh, defenses from common positions uh, for tomorrow, okay? So right now, I realize that I'm in a better position. I need key switches to step to me, steps over my head. It's pretty much, pretty much over for me. Uh, very strong position, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, I, can, I can try and stretch my arm, but the problem is I'm going to run into an arm bar. I can try and kill that arm bar. It's like if, if I kill the armbar by doing this, I'm going to run into an Americana. Yeah, I can defend it, but why go through all these attacks when we can actually defend the Kimura in its early stages here? Yeah, he's got the Kimura grip. What I need to do for a Kimura is remember, the Kimura works because he's pinning my shoulders. He's not pinning any of them right now. Okay, But before he switches his hips, my shoulders are free. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my leg, my left leg in this case, and I'm going to sneak it inside the loop of the tumor. Okay? I can do that because I can stretch my arm and I'll widen up the loop. So I'm going to do this and bring my leg here. Okay? Now I broke the tumor grip. If, if he keeps that hand the way he's here, it's probably not going to be very pleasant for him. So it's probably going to have to let go there. Now I can go on this game. Okay? It's easier said than done, but Maybe we're not going to be able to escape, maybe he's going to recover uh, his position before we escape, obviously. But at least we're going to be able to break it tomorrow. Very important, we need to do this before our shoulders get pinned. If he pins my shoulder, just uh, sit back a little bit. Pin my shoulder, sit back, or something like this. It becomes much harder. Why, is it, why does it become much harder? Because I can't, I can't bring my legs with my, uh, my shoulder pin. I'm kind of in a crucifix position right now, even though he's not. Stepping over me, right? But if my, as soon as he gets that grip, I know what's coming. There, it's not a secret, right? So as soon as he gets that grip, I know he's going to be switching his knee, his uh, hips. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn into the Kimura lock. Okay? I'm going to stretch my arm, risking an arm bar, but don't forget that as you stretch, you're going to put your knee inside the loop. Okay? And then from here, I'm going to use my legs to break. Now, notice the gap that's open. Right away, I'm going to throw my arm. Okay? And I'm going to start working on my escapes. Maybe you'll recover. Maybe you'll take my back from here. Who knows? Maybe you'll do the move that we did earlier. Who knows? It's a risky run. But at the end of the day, I'm going from, from the, the, the initial stages of a, of a very bad submission to the initial stages of a great escape. So this one took one way to do when uh, they attempted from side control. All right, so now we find ourselves uh, we messed up a long time ago, but we find ourselves in a position where we're right here, right? And now we have to escape from this. Um, he has the, the leg scissor choke and all that stuff, but there are ways we can, we can work with this, okay? He has good control here. Maybe he's pulling my arm into his chest, my tricep, yeah. This is, this is making it very uncomfortable for me, but Right now is the time. I, I don't want to hold. I'm going to lose this battle, okay? I don't want to hold here and just uh, expect him to get more tired than I will. That won't happen most likely. So what I want to do is notice that my shoulders are not pinned. Yes, his leg is right behind my back, so I can't go flat. But uh, pinch your knees a little bit tighter, right? So I can't go flat. Look, I can't move my torso. It's perpendicular. But what happens when I shift my hips forward like a forward shrimp? Notice how my, my back gets, starts free enough, right? I'm doing it very slowly. It's going to happen in a, most, in a more uh, like, a, like a faster and jerky move. So once that happens, I'm not going to try and bring my, head, my, my elbow back because he's, now he's going to have that good control where he's going to stretch his arms. It's, it's going to be impossible, right? But what I can do is I can slide down. Once I come this way, now I can work on the escapes. Okay, and I'm going to show this kit in particular with the hands together. So, let's go to the initial position, so for the camera. Pinch tight, yeah. So we're here, right? I don't want to just hold here because from here on, just bad things, only bad things are going to happen to me. But there are things we can do. I can't turn on my back because uh, his, his left knee is behind my back, right? I can't just hold here forever. It's not going to happen. I know that he's going to try alternative chokes, alternative uh, submissions if nothing else works. 
But what I can do is uh, bring, bring my tricep into your chest. There you go. This is, this is the actual threat of the submission here. Um, what I can do is I can move my hips, right? This is, the, this is the best part. And my shoulders are not pinned. They're immobilized with wedges, but they're not pinned. But I can move my hips, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm either gonna swing my legs forward and then violently turn forward, like kind of shrink, uh, kind of like scoot forward, or I'm gonna bring one leg forward here, I'm gonna shrimp, forward shrimp, and then go under. This is actually easier than, uh, it's, not, it's not a very difficult move to make, to do. Uh, without the gi, it's pretty easy. With the gi, it's very hard, uh, simply because there's a lot of uh, friction uh, from the material, both on his part, here on the arm, here around my shoulders, and uh, it's, just, it's just harder to do those kind of moves, those kind of escapes dynamic escapes with the gi. So with the gi, you get to that position, it's a very, very risky, it's, it's really high percentage finish position for him, right? But I'm holding my hands here. My legs are free. Notice what happens. Notice what happens when I start uh, get, get your knees tight. Notice what happens with my body. And you can tell by the way I'm, I'm here, by the positioning of my body now, relative to when I'm done swinging my legs. I can literally swing my way out of there, even if it pinches hard. Once, once I get out of it, because I'm holding my hands together, once I get out of it, yeah, I either swing or I forward swing. I'm going to turn my arms, stretch your arms now, like you're going to control, right? So now he's got a good control. I can't just turn this way. You can tell, right? But if I reinforce, with this hand, I can actually turn. I'm gonna start pushing my own hand, and by doing so, I'm gonna be pushing his hands as well. So I'm gonna start pushing up and turning this way. If he, if he doesn't do anything, maybe I'm gonna get lucky, who knows? <laughs> maybe I won't, probably not. But this is, he's probably not gonna hold on to the kimura because he's gonna wrist lock himself. It's not a pleasant feeling. So this is one way to, to, to do it, by pushing onto my hand. And it's probably the fastest way because I'm already, I already have my hands together from the defense itself, right, from when I was holding my, my hand. The other way to do it is, uh, as I came out of here, right, as I came out of here, stretch your arms and you control, right, maybe I can let go. It's very hard for me to finish it tomorrow now, regardless of what it is. Maybe I can let go and I can push here on this elbow. It's the same kind of thing. Now I'm, I'm basically free to go. Maybe I can sweep in or reverse the position rather and go on top. So this is a very good way to defend the dorsal kimura. And again, it's a lot easier without the gi than it is with the gi. With the gi, it's very hard to, to uh, make your way out, your way out of uh, that tightness, okay? All right, so now we're gonna look at how we're gonna deal with this position Remember when we, we reversed a half guard, top half guard, and he manages to get this uh, Kimura grip here. If I start stretching my arm, it's gonna go into an arm bar, right? So if I don't do anything, he will probably start either forcing the arm bar or going into the T Kimura, right? So before he does any of that, I wanna be able to defend here. I'm gonna grab my own leg just to slow things down so it doesn't go into the arm bar. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is, now, uh, by the way, yes, I can do this too. The problem is that I'm gonna open my legs and he's gonna be able to uh, step out of my front guard and pass the guard. Now I still have to deal with escapes. And he's gonna get points perhaps. So, I am right here. He went around my, my uh, leg, my knee shield. Got this keyboard grip. So what do I do from here? One good way to, to, to act now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame with my, my free arm behind his, uh, his back here, behind his waist. Then, I'm gonna, this leg is gonna be uh, pinned down to the floor so I can uh, maintain the grip of the half guard. Next, I'm going to, um, next I'm going to uh, sneak my top leg underneath as a um, butterfly hook, okay? 
I'm right here. If he tries to step out, it's hard. If he tries to pull my arm for an armbar, I'm still maintaining my grip. I can even grab my own shorts. Okay? So what I'll do now is I have the wedge of this hand behind his lower back. I'm going to lift here this way so he doesn't step out of the headguard. Now I'm going to push his hips, literally push his hips as I shrimp under this way. Okay? I'm going to push his hips up and shrimp underneath. And get on his back. Yeah, I got the bottom hook. If he maintains the kimura grip, that's fine. I'm still here. I can even let go of the back, get a tight waist here, okay? I can come up and smash. That's really not, not good for him. He, he should probably let go of the kimura grip there. One more time. Now, he switches. Boom, switches base right away. I'm going to put my leg above his knee. Okay? If I just stay here, he's, he's kind of out there, right? As we already determined. So I'm going to put my hamstring above his knee. I'm going to cross my legs. Now, I'm going to grab my own pants here so it doesn't threaten me, and I'm going to wedge my elbow here, my forearm, behind his lower back, behind his hip, rather. Okay? Now, I'm going to take my leg, my three leg here, my top leg, and I'm going to wedge it underneath like a butterfly hook while I'm still pulling with the top leg, sorry, with my bottom leg, top leg, whichever it is, my right leg, into his shin. I'm pulling with my into his shin, and I'm driving this up. Now, I'm going to elevate him with my foot, with my left, and I'm going to shrink underneath as I push up on his hips. That's gonna bring me to a bottom hook here, leg right here. Now, he probably will let go of the Kimura. Maybe he will think, well, he's going to take my back if I let go of the Kimura. So let's say you don't let go of the Kimura. If he doesn't let go of the Kimura, it's very hard for me to take it back because he has a very good grip there still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab around his waist right here if I can. If he's got a bigger waist or something like this, I'm going to just grab here around the leg. He can't finish the Kimura on this side. It's okay. I'm going to pendulum up. And come to the top here. I'm going to scissor my legs and come in a top position. Once I get here, he's in a very dark area. If this is MMA, it's really bad. If he lets go of the Kimura from this position as I landed, if he lets go of the Kimura, if I see belt, start taking it back. Okay? I already have the bottom hook from the defense, so I should be okay there. Alright guys, so back to this position here, but now he's going to do the Tikimura setup. So he's going to roll over his shoulder, attract his legs, fall into a Tikimura, and I'm going to defend that right away as soon as he rolls out, rather than give him opportunities to take my back, to finish the, you know, stand, uh, get up and finish armbar, Kimura, etc. etc. Once he gets into a Tikimura and he settles down, he escapes again a little bit harder. But if I can catch him in a moment where it's already, it, it gets a little bit hard, it's still very possible to escape. We can do even on the latest escape. But let's not forget, he's not just going to chill there, he's going to take the opportunity and he should even start going into submissions. Alright, so uh, let's say he rolls out into Tiki Moran, go for As he does that, right away, I do the exact same escape. Is it coming perpendicular to me? Is it coming perpendicular? I do the exact same escape I was doing before. I'm going to start going, he wants to be perpendicular to me. I'm going to post on his hands or his elbow here, either way. Post on his elbow or his hands, and I'm going to start getting parallel to him. Now, I'm coming up. Presumably, he's not just going to stay there, he's probably going to scramble out too. But we get to a position where something else will happen and not me being with the Kimura or the Kimura hole. So, again, we're here. I cover with my hamstring, I cover his, his knee. He goes over to roll for a Kimura, for a Kimura. And as he does that, right away I push on the, on the lock of the hands as I make my body parallel to his. Okay, he wants to be perpendicular to me, stretch his arms, and now it becomes a little bit harder. Still not, not um, impossible to defend, I'll show it in a second. But it becomes a little bit harder, not to speak that he is going to take the initiative and start going into submissions, right? So. I want to act as fast as possible. I don't want to be in this position. What for? So as soon as he rolls, I meet him here. 
and I start going parallel to him. As I go parallel to him, I can actually come up on top. Maybe he'll come up on top, and he's going to let go here, maybe or something. Maybe we're going to go to the scramble, he's going to start taking me down, and we're in a position where who knows what's going to happen, but it's better than what's, what's been going on for my arm so far. The other thing is if he's already in the Let's do this from here. This. He's already in the Tikimura, but he's not doing anything. Right? Stretch your arms and elevate my. There you go. He's not doing anything here. Look, I can't turn, I can't turn, I can't go back because this is really mobilizing me, okay? And I don't want to do something like this because I'm going to give you my back. Thing is, I'm not doing anything if he's not taking the initiative to attack. Trying to defend. What I'm going to do is take my hand. It's very hard to, to reach here because he's stretching his arms. He's ha he has my elbow elevated. If I, even if I go here, it's very hard to do anything. But I can do a thumb pulse on his elbow here. Watch. I can do a thumb pulse on the elbow and start pushing the elbow to open it this way, which gives us the exact same reaction as before. I come up into his lock and we're out of here. If he holds on to it, I'm going to end up on top. He's probably going to let go of the grip and start getting his own scramble come up in a winning position. All right, so these are some common defenses to some common, or rather early defenses to some uh, common uh, Kimura grips, Kimura holds, and Kimura submissions, more importantly. Again, try to defend early, try to defend before they even lock their grip, but it does happen uh, more often than we like. When it happens, there's no need to panic, there's no need to wait, more importantly, because if you wait, you're definitely getting deeper and deeper into the submission hold, and it's much harder. If he pins your shoulders with the Kimura grip, you're probably you're done. Okay, so you want to act as soon as possible, just with every other submission, like with every other submission. All right, well, thank you for watching. Hope uh, everyone enjoyed this instruction. There's multiple parts of it, and they're all going to be linked together.